Today, I want to talk about the age-old debate, console versus PC, and more specifically, why PC is better. Now, before you rush down to the comment section and write that nasty comment about how I'm some kind of PC elitist and that I need to grow up, allow me a few points of clarification. First and foremost, I don't hate consoles. I don't hate console gaming. I'm not here to bash on consoles and I'm not here to bash on you if you game on a console. In fact, consoles sell millions of units every single year and they offer a ton of value to millions of gamers around the world. I would never be so egotistical as to try and downplay that or pretend it's not true. You may be asking, why am I making the video? I'm making the video for the person that I used to be. I was a diehard console gamer. In fact, I can never even imagine switching over to the PC platform at one point. I made a full video talking about this and I'll have it linked down below in the pinned comment if you're interested in seeing it. But with that being said, I went over to YouTube and I started searching relentlessly for all the videos I could find on PC versus console. All I found were just more and more reasons why I should switch over to PC gaming. The problem with those videos today in 2022 is that all of those videos are kind of old at this point. They're two, three, even four years old in some cases, and they don't necessarily account for the Xbox Series X and the PlayStation 5. Now that's what I plan to talk about today in the most objective way possible. If something is my opinion, I will do my best to remember to state that it is my opinion, but first, I need to pay some bills and say thank you to the very first ever official sponsor of my channel, Keys Fan. Windows 11 and Office 2021 are currently the latest versions of Microsoft's operating system and its suite of Office applications. Both feature many innovations in security and ease of use, making them more popular than any previous version. KeysFan offers the best deals for legal, safe, and economical shopping. KeysFan is currently running their autumn sale with extra discounts, and you can shop with confidence from keysfan.com because customer service is supported, and if the key is invalid, refunds are available. KeysFan offers Windows 10 Pro keys for super discounts, just a little bit above $7. You can even get Microsoft Office 2019 or Microsoft Office 2021. If you're interested in picking up one of these mini office applications for a super discount, you can find the link in a pinned comment down below this video. Thank you, KeysFan, for being the first official sponsor of this video. Let's start off with this, because I know some of you are going to write this in the comment section. Why choose it all? Why not just buy everything? Buy an Xbox Series X, a PlayStation 5, a Nintendo Switch, and a high-end gaming PC. As awesome as that would be, it's not realistic. Who has the money for that? Who has the time for that? I know I don't. I already get a ton of comments where people complain about building a PC and how expensive PC hardware can be. Even if somebody has all the devices at their disposal, they can only play one at a time. And naturally they will gravitate towards one over all the others. And that's why I think it's wise to look at the situation and say, hey, if I can only pick one, what will it be? Will it be a console or a PC? And of course, if it is a console, which console? And that's a whole nother video for another day. But today we're gonna talk about the platforms, console and PC. Now the first major benefit of PC gaming is an oldie, but a goodie, free online multiplayer. Now, I don't care how you wanna slice it up and say that, well, PlayStation Plus offers all these benefits and Xbox Live Gold offers all these benefits. The reality of the situation is the real reason why, the main reason why you're paying for that online subscription is so you can play with your friends online in Fortnite or Call of Duty or some other kind of multiplayer game. And the reality is you're already paying for your internet and you've already paid for the game and you've already paid for the console. Why should you have to pay more money to use your own internet to play with your friends online. Honestly, it just doesn't make sense. And in 2022, quite frankly, it's it's a little bit silly when you can just build a PC and play for free basically all the same games. Now, speaking of games, games are typically cheaper on PC as well. Of course, there's an exception to every rule and I'm sure somebody in the comment section will say, well, actually right now, but generally speaking, games are cheaper on PC. Let me prove it. Hogwarts Legacy is coming out next year in February, assuming it doesn't get delayed again. And honestly, it's a very anticipated game and many people are looking forward to it. But right now you can pre-order it on all platforms, but look at the pricing. Right now on the PlayStation 5 and the Xbox Series X, it is $69.99 or basically $70 
to pre-order the game. But if you have a PC and if you plan to play that exact same game on PC, you can go to greenmangaming.com and pay only $47.99 for the exact same game or basically $48. That is $22 in savings. So now on the PC platform, even though it costs you more money up front to build the hardware, you're getting cheaper games and free online multiplayer. You're saving money in the long run. Also not to mention the fact you're getting a computer. You can do other things outside of just streaming Netflix and playing video games. You can build a resume, you can apply for jobs, you can do homework, you can video edit, you can make videos like this with a camera, you can write code, you can build video games, you can build apps. So much stuff, it's a full-fledged computer that can also play video games and mind you, play them better than a console in a lot of situations. But we're gonna talk more about that later in the video. Now, the next benefit I wanna talk about is something that I feel like gets overlooked every now and again when people talk about this subject. And that is true multitasking and multi-screen support. Now, I know some people out there, they only use one monitor for their PC and that's totally fine. But I'm telling you, once you upgrade and get a secondary monitor and you start utilizing it the right way, it's almost impossible to go back. Now, first and foremost, once you have a secondary display of any kind, you don't have to alt tab as much between applications. Many times you can have the game on your main display and then over on the right side, you can have a tutorial for that game and you can look over and follow that tutorial and then do all the same exact same steps in the game in real time. And then if you need to go between the two monitors, if you're in full screen mode, you'll have to alt tab. But if you do window borderless, you can simply move your mouse from monitor to monitor and you never have to leave your game. I absolutely love this benefit of being on PC. Now, admittedly, the Xbox One did attempt to do something like this back in 2013 with its snapping capabilities. And the idea was you could snap Twitch or snap YouTube over to the right-hand panel and follow a tutorial while you were gaming, but it didn't really work well. And that was because the Xbox One was vastly underpowered to be able to pull something like that off. And so ultimately they took those capabilities away. To the best of my knowledge, they've never brought that back, not even today on the Xbox Series X. Now consoles have done a better job at letting you do things like play music in the background from Spotify or some other type of music application, and that's great, but that is nothing compared to what you can do on a PC with true multitasking support. Okay, this next one is honestly, arguably one of the best benefits of being on PC. You hear it in every single PC video, and honestly, as a console gamer, you write it off all the time. And that is mod support. Mods are one of those things that you didn't know you needed until you have it. And then when you don't have it, you're like, oh man, I really wish I really wish I had a mod for this right now. Let me explain. So everybody out there has seen really cool character mods out there. For example, I've been playing Spider-Man Remastered recently, and I absolutely love that game. And it already has a ton of mod support out there. Here's some gameplay footage of me playing around as Michelangelo from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. And some people might find that cool and awesome and other people might find it funny and other people might say, well, that kind of takes me out of the gaming experience. And that's great. You don't have to do that if you don't want to, but the option is there. Whereas on a console, that, that option is just not even there. But it doesn't stop there. What if you wanna launch into the game as fast as possible and you wanna skip the loading screen in the beginning and the intro and all of that stuff. Well, there's a mod for that and you can skip right past the intro and go straight to the game and get into your game faster. Well, what if I like the intro, but maybe I wanna change it? There's a mod for that too. You can actually change the intro to Spider-Man Remastered on the PC to now be the 90s cartoon intro to the show. That's awesome and that's the power of mods. And in a lot of cases, mods are used to actually fix problems with a game that maybe the developer doesn't plan on fixing or hasn't had the opportunity to get around the fixing yet. And one of those situations is everybody knows about the Peter Parker situation where the original Spider-Man on PS4, that Peter Parker looked completely different than the Peter Parker on the PS5 remastered version. And so now there's mods to help restore the older Peter Parker. Or even in my case, I'm using a mod where I just added some stubble to them to make them look just a little bit more mature. And the fact is you may not like mods and that's totally fine. I was on PC for 
well over a year before I started tinkering around with mods, but I promise you, once you start doing it, it becomes incredibly addictive. And yes, I'm aware there are a couple of games on console that allow you to mod the games, but those mods are so incredibly limited. They have a certain size they have to abide by. They can't be any bigger than that. And it's only on a select few games. And on top of all of that, no matter what the mod is, it automatically disables your achievements and your trophies, which in my opinion, kind of takes the fun out of it. Okay, now we're winding down to the last couple of points and I wanna talk about something I'm incredibly passionate about and that is customization. The thing that always killed me about being a console gamer was that everybody's dedicated gaming console looked exactly the same. We all have the standard basic black box or in some cases, basic white box. And of course, they would release these limited edition consoles that were never announced or confirmed or sold on day one. They would always come later on in the console's life cycle. So now if you wanted that limited edition, you had to go buy the same console a second time. Well, the thing that's great about PC gaming is that you can fully customize your PC to look exactly the way that you want it to look and you can make it completely custom, completely unique, if you wanna do that. Now, I know a lot of people don't care about that. They're fine with a standard basic black box and that's fine, but for me, I like customization. My wife is a really big Mario fan and so I built her a fully custom Super Mario gaming PC and I did a full video about that on the channel if you wanna check it out. And for my gaming PC, it has a fully custom water cooling loop in it and it has a white and blue aesthetic to resemble Vegeta from Dragon Ball Super in his Super Saiyan Blue form. I'm a really big Dragon Ball fan and I love the white and blue aesthetic and so I wanted my PC to use that aesthetic while also honoring Dragon Ball in some capacity. I even put a little pop figure of Vegeta in there. And by the way, he glows in the dark and it's, it's very awesome. And so customization is one of those benefits that isn't necessarily something that is an objective benefit as much as it is a personal preference benefit, but it is still there as an option if that type of thing appeals to you. All roads are starting to lead the PC, and this is what I'm talking about. So first and foremost, right now, if you have a gaming PC, you get every single PC game that has ever been on the PC, plus Xbox is committed to bringing all Xbox day one releases over to the PC on day one. And so now there's virtually no real reason to have an Xbox because all Xbox games are either already on PC or they're coming to PC. And now PlayStation is officially all in on the PC platform. And I know that still hurts many people's feelings out there, but the fact of the matter is PlayStation is committed to porting their exclusives over to the PC platform. They even have a dedicated studio that they completely bought out and straight up own that is dedicated to PC porting. Now, the only games you can't play legally on a PC are Nintendo exclusives. And honestly, I don't really see a problem with having a dedicated gaming device as your PC and then having a secondary device like the Nintendo Switch. And as a secondary device that's only used every now and again, there's not really a problem with that. Plus not to mention the Nintendo Switch is cheaper than an Xbox Series X and it's cheaper than a PlayStation 5. So again, having it as a secondary is not really a problem. So really, unless you just have to play that PlayStation exclusive day one, then there's not really a reason to spend your money on an Xbox Series X or a PlayStation 5, in my opinion. Put it into a PC where you're gonna get all the computer benefits but then also get all the gaming benefits. And let's talk about that right now. Now for many years with a console, what you saw is what you got. That was it. There was no game customization of any kind. You couldn't raise or lower the resolution. You couldn't raise or lower the frame rate. What the developers gave you is the only option you had on the table. Now with the Xbox Series X and the PlayStation 5, they are at least trying to give you a couple of options to choose from, like a performance mode or a fidelity mode or quality mode or whatever they wanna call it. Now that is awesome and it is a major step in the right direction. However, PC allows you to have full customization. Maybe you want your resolution at 4K and maybe you want your shadows at low settings, but your hair quality at high settings or ultra settings or whatever the option may be. The fact is you can go through and fine tune your game 
to your exact liking. And some people view this as a negative. They don't wanna think about it. They don't wanna be forced to do this. But I never view control as a negative thing. But in addition to that, we still have all the original benefits of PC gaming that people mostly start these videos off with. And that is the fact that depending on the level of hardware and obviously how much money you've put into your PC, if you have two games that are identical, one on a console, one on a PC, typically speaking, that game on the PC is going to look better and it's going to run better at a higher frame rate. And honestly, while games do look better on a PC over a console, I don't think the gap in terms of graphical fidelity is enough anymore to make that your sole reason for jumping over to the PC platform. And that's why I saved it for the end of the video. Okay, that was a lot and my voice is starting to get shot. I hope I did a good job here at explaining why PC overall objectively is better than console. And if I have failed to do that, let me know in the comment section below why that is. I do look forward to having a conversation with you. And if you like this video, do me a favor, hit the like button because it goes a long way in helping me out. And if you're new here, you know what to do. I wish I could say hit the follow button, but YouTube doesn't work that way. They work off the subscribe button. So do me a favor and hit that. It's totally free. Thanks again for your time. Thanks for checking out the video. And until next time, E-Rock out.